Hello, hello there, and good afternoon, Weather Center viewers. It is October 17th, 2023. Happy Tuesday to those of you tuning in. I do apologize. We are at about 90% of that 100% recovery from what I've been feeling over the last few days, so excuse me again. I apologize immediately if this seems like a very broad brushed or quick video update, but there are a few new parameters I really want to cover with you guys, regardless of the way that I'm feeling, okay? We're not starting in the tropics today. We're actually looking over the United States because as we look ahead for this upcoming weekend, we're preparing for our next big nor'easter system to take effect somewhere between the mid-Atlantic states and the northeastern United States. Some of the earlier model indications had it developing just to the south of our mid-Atlantic region, closer to our neck of the woods here in the southeast, but that has since changed with some of the recent developments we had in our upper air pattern or our jet stream system at 300 millibars, leading to some development a little bit further to the north, now somewhere in the lower Great Lakes Appalachian region before shooting off to the east-northeast inundating our northeastern states with quite a bit of cold air, lots of rainfall, and a lot of good snowfall here in the near distant future. And it looks like it'll actually help give us some good weather down here for the state of Florida and the rest of the southeast as we get into Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. The reason we start with this is this is going to be pivotal for what happens out in the Atlantic, not only with Invest 94, but something new on the horizon that we identified last night during APM Tropics Talk. We'll get to that here in a second. If you also watch as we get towards the middle and latter parts of this forecast loop, you can see that our hurricane out there in the eastern Pacific that is expected to develop over the next 24, maybe at the max 72 hours from now. All of our models are highlighting it, and it's only a matter of time before we get our next tropical depression and named system out there in the east pack. You can see we're also looking ahead to see what kind of a severe weather outbreak we could have for the eastern four corner states of Colorado, New Mexico, into the central and southern plains, affecting a large area as not only a next solid punch of cold air comes out of Canada, but that interaction of our tropical moisture gets pulled north from that really potent high pressure situated over the eastern half of the CONUS. So a lot of moving pieces we have to analyze, and I wish I had the energy to go into them today, guys. I apologize, but we will be talking about them going forward. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You can probably still hear a little bit of congestion in my voice, but we're getting there, and I promise I'm still going to keep getting these video updates out for you guys and emphasizing where it is we need to be paying attention to. So here is 94L, and once again, we've been going back and forth. Yesterday when we saw our video, we were at about a 30% chance in the next 48 hours and down to a 70% chance in the next 7 days. We have elevated our risk of seeing some formation over the next couple of days to a 60% chance and we're back up to a whopping 80% of seeing something within the next week. This is anticipated to develop and we have a really good amount of agreement from all of our models at this point that we are going to at least see Tropical Storm Tammy at this point. What's really concerning are some of the long range trends I've been looking at over the last 48 to 72 hours since about this time on Sunday. I've noticed that the Euro and the Icon particularly want to do some very interesting things as well as the Korean model, but I'm not going to show that to you in this video because the Korean model has definitely shown some pretty high levels of discontinuity as you get towards the very tail end of its run. So I'm going to kind of throw that out for now and I want to focus on our Icon German model as well as the European model for this video. With a weaker system, I can't emphasize enough, we've been talking about this across multiple channels, National Hurricane Center, our forecast models have been highlighting it. Weaker system means a likely track to the west-northwest, a little bit more than that northwestward push we've been seeing. The Canadian model and the GFS still want to strengthen this a little bit quicker. It does have a favorable condition or a favorable setup to do so. It's just a matter of this thing consolidating and actually getting going. Because on satellite, if you look, we have really good thunderstorm activity with it. Not a whole lot of shear to help really get rid of those thunderstorms near its core, but they're not wrapping up. It's not deepening, and we're not seeing those thunderstorms pull together. You hear the term consolidate quite a bit. We're not seeing that low-level circulation begin to really increase that spin and that momentum around them to pull those thunderstorm complexes in and finally start to see that exchange of heat and energy within the center deepen the storm and get a name system out there. Here's our current look at the 12Z track guidance and unfortunately we have seen a pretty substantial shift. And when I say shift folks, I mean we had a really good amount of consensus that we were going to see some sort of a track like this just skirting up against our leeward islands. Now you can see we have about 70 to 75 percent of our operational models at this point really highlighting the potential for a direct impact to our leeward islands as maybe a mid to low end tropical storm. We'll have to see what happens over the next 24, 48 hours. As I mentioned, going into this weekend, not only with that nor'easter over the U.S., but also with what happens with this system between now and we'll say Thursday, if not Friday at the very latest as we wake up in the morning on Friday. Our models have not been very helpful. It's been more so now casting with this system, watching it day by day, update by update, hour by hour, just to see exactly what it wants to do. But unfortunately, we have seen a pretty general shift
shift from a west-north to a northwest track down to a more westward to a west-northwest track. So we're still keeping a close eye out for our Leeward Islands, U.S. British Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico. You guys can see some impacts. And I'm going to show you why here in just a second. So here's our ICON model. The ICON has been doing fairly well with this system since we first saw it plop off of the African coast. The reason I want to take a little bit more time to show you guys what the ICON is showing because as of 0Z yesterday, and even at the very end of the 18 Zulu run yesterday, I'm noticing some very bizarre activity towards the very back end of this model loop. You take it through time and you can see our disturbance finally starting to get its act together, trying to close off a center of circulation and plowing right through our leeward islands as maybe a tropical depression trying to become a low-end tropical storm. But take a look at what happens between hour 90 and hour 114. You notice how it doesn't move. It stays parked over our U.S. and British Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico, and then finally gets a little bit more of a westward wobble to it before almost doing what looks to be a loop-de-loop -loop towards the very back end and moving due east at this point in the run. I know it's the tail end, but this has been trending for the last three model runs. I saw it a little bit on 18, definitely on 0, definitely on 6, and now we have 12Z showing this very weird wobble with it. It's almost like the frontal system that wants to pick it up and take it away is not having as much influence to it. That could be in part due to our upper air pattern over North America changing, seeing cyclogenesis of that nor'easter a little further to the north to where that frontal tail and that associated trough does not pick it up as fast. It could also be, again, a resemblance of the fact that we have a weaker system out there, so those larger scale weather features are not going to play as much of a role in the steering current near to its vicinity. The reason I bring this up is because this also leads directly into what I want to talk about next. So these are our 0Z Euro ensembles, and for the last several days, if you've been on my Instagram, Instagram or even just looking at my community posts here on YouTube, I've been seeing a very bizarre trend and with a 75 to 25, maybe even a 30-70 split in our ensembles right about at this point, right about at the five to six day mark. Notice how we have a number of ensembles still tracking it out to see, but day to day, 0 and 12, 0 and 12 guys, we have not seen a complete diminishing in all those ensemble members that suddenly want to track it to the west. You see, and it's not like we're seeing one or two of them. I can see one, two, three, four, five. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'm not going to count all of them, but as you go through the back end of the loop, notice how we get a number of our ensembles trying to move it off to the west through the Bahamas or taking it through the rest of our greater Antilles and even into the Gulf of Mexico. I'm not switching on an alert system. I'm not trying to hype up those few ensemble, well, I should say more than a few. I'm not trying to hype up those anomalous ensemble members that suddenly take it to the west, but I do find it interesting that the icon is acting up right at about the same time and our Euro refuses to back down on at least 30 to 35 percent of its members agreeing that we could see what looks to be even a strong system make its way through the Bahamas and the greater Antilles of the Dominican Republic, Cuba, getting closer to the Cayman Islands as well. I'm watching out for you guys. And then finally, we'll transition to what I'm going to wrap up this video discussing and just getting a little bit of eyes on it. If you look as we start back at 198 hours, notice how all of a sudden our ensembles seem to go crazy. You notice that they kind of just scatter in all sorts of different directions directions like a virus almost spreading inside of a petri dish. There's really no consensus or agreement on what's going to happen. Believe it or not, that's not 94. So we're here now at the 0Z Euro, both with the mean state level pressure and precip and our 500 millibar vorticity chart because there's something very interesting that's going to happen and it's been highlighted on every single one of our models, at least all of our models that can reach this far out in time. On October 26th, it looks like with our zonal flow that could maybe instigate a little bit more westward movement in our 94L future tropical storm Tammy is also going to create a little bubble of cold air that's going to walk its way down into the central Atlantic and interact with that leftover front a line that's going to be brought down by our nor'easter. So I want you to pay close attention first on your right hand side. So take a look at how our pattern kind of evens itself out. There goes this weekend's nor'easter coming across the mid-Atlantic northeastern states and then we finally get a little bit more west to east flow in our jet. But then look at towards the tail end. You see that little break off area of energy right there moving across Bermuda headed into the Central Atlantic, and then all of a sudden it spins up into an upper low feature. Then if you take a look at the left-hand side, you can see a reflection of this as an inverted trough in almost several areas of lower pressure, not only just to the east of Bermuda, but across much of our northern Caribbean islands, extending down into the eastern Caribbean. So this is something I definitely want us to keep an eye on, because if you go back to the right-hand side chart and look at the vorticity, there's also a weak tropical wave moving through our leeward and windward islands.
islands and then getting absorbed by that cold pocket as it comes down. If you guys remember at the very end of 2022, we had a very random storm, a uh, Hurricane Nicole that decided to pop up willy-nilly at the last second just as we were getting ready to close out hurricane season. I'm not saying, guys, that this is for sure Nicole, but last night during our Tropics talk and before bedtime yesterday, I was obsessing over previous analysis charts and looking at all the recorded data that we have for when Nicole decided to take shape as a subtropical cyclone and as she made her transition to an actual tropical hurricane moving into the state of Florida. Now, before you you guys flood my comment section. I'm not predicting a Florida landfall. I'm not predicting anything to come out of this because this is still way out in the future, but I'm noticing some very interesting trends across all of our models. We have one more model platform I want to show you, which is why this has my attention going ahead closer to our Halloween time frame. We have very, very, very similar dynamics in play that we saw with Nicole's cyclogenesis last year, and I know it was almost impossible to see this because of the dynamics we have, the El Nino environment across much of the Caribbean and the Atlantic but it goes without saying this entire year has not played by the rules so we cannot rule out something big whether it be just a non-tropical upper low hanging out there in the Atlantic becoming another Rex block feature underneath that broad amplitude ridge you can see trying to show up on 500 millibars or this could turn into a subtropical cyclone because of how hot the waters have been out there we definitely want to get eyes on this and talk a little bit more about this as we go through the back end of this week and into early next week last but not least here is our 12z Canadian model I'm not too sure why but the GFS is populating all sorts of back and forth we we had our first couple of panels come in. Then we had between hours 150 to 210 come in. So I'm going to dismiss that for now, and I'll try to take a look at it closer to our 18Z update to see if all of 12Z is fully populated. But if you go through this run, you can see that the Canadian model has also made a bit more of a westward shift in what could be Tropical Storm Tammy impacting our northernmost leeward islands out there headed towards the U.S.-British Virgin Islands before strengthening and getting picked up by our nor'easter. That is not what I'd like us to fixate on. Yes, it's a problem. Yes, it's an imminent threat that we should be focusing on, and we are putting a lot of energy into it, but watch as we get towards the tail end of the loop. So there's our tropical wave. It's very disorganized. Blink and you'll miss it. There's really not a whole lot of structure with it, but as that system moves through our Caribbean islands into the Eastern Caribbean, there she goes, just to the south of our British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the rest of our Lesser Antilles, just off to their west, I should say. Here comes that little breakaway bubble of cold air. You can see that inverted trough working its way along the eastern apex of our high pressure over the northeastern U.S. As these two interact, look at what starts to take shape out there. It looks like Bermuda has a 1,000 to 997 millibar low move across that area, and in comparison to yesterday's run with both the 12 and 0Z Canadian model, we're now seeing two different low appendages, one that moves over Puerto Rico and then another one that could potentially impact Bermuda. This is way out in time. I don't really anticipate this is exactly what we're going to see take shape, but it's on my radar, and it looks like this could be a very expansive storm system, whatever it is. We're not going to talk classification or characteristics with it just yet, but I do buy into it. I definitely buy into it because of that strong interaction we have between the bonafide polar air that's coming in across eastern Conus and all of that return flow and that tropical equatorial moisture and warm air that's going to be with our Azores high surging around the western extent of that, interacting with that stationary boundary. And with that cold pocket that's going to break off from our jet between 300 to 500 millibars, that'll definitely help instigate a little bit of cyclogenesis, whatever this thing decides to take shape as, as we get closer to Halloween, October 26th and October 27th. So it goes without saying, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Still a long ways away, but it's definitely on my radar, definitely worth talking about because of how expansive it is. And being entrenched underneath a broad amplitude ridge or a low amplitude ridge that's really not going to do a whole lot to steer it, it could get very interesting to see exactly what our models try to do with it as we get closer and closer to the October 26th time frame and we could see something try to take shape out there. Anyways, folks, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video again. I do sincerely apologize that unfortunately the weather has got me feeling under the weather. I'm doing my very best to stay hydrated and stay energized and while rested at the same time to try to get whatever this little bug is out of my system so we can be back to full operating capacity and get back to our very, very in-depth and detailed weather center segments. We will definitely see you tomorrow for our 6 p.m. full flight update tomorrow afternoon and then our 8 p.m. Wednesday Tropics talk to where we can kind of go a little bit more into detail with everything that's happening in the Atlantic as well as what's happening over North America because it goes without saying this is 
a clear representation of why I continue to put so much emphasis on we need to watch what's happening over North America and even out in the Eastern Pacific because you can clearly see as those systems come across, there's going to be some interaction going on. And it looks like we could actually see a storm system brew up because of this interaction. I'll leave you guys with that to fester and marinate and ponder. Until next time, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.